What's up, America? Neil here with Jogger Farms Academy. Thanks for watching. Today, I have a very special guest, and we're going to talk about what you need in your medical kit. So let's get started. So how's it going, sir? Pretty good. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate right. it. This is Gabe Atchison. Hello, everybody. Gabe, why don't you tell everybody a little bit about who you are and what you do? Oh, my name is Gabe Atchison. Uh, I own a company called uh, CRMS, which is Crucible Risk Mitigation Services. We specialize in education and evaluation uh, for all sorts of different things, but mainly it's for preparedness. And a lot of what we do now um, focuses mainly on medical training. Okay. Um, so we do a lot of that. And So you're a doctor? I am not a doctor, <laughs> no. Uh, I'm a, a proud Marine Corps veteran. I've been uh, in emergency services now for... Uh, I've been a fireman for the past 30 years. Well, thank you for your service. Thank you very much. Um, I've been a, a paramedic in the field, uh, more importantly, for about the last 15 years. And I've worked in everything from uh, emergency rooms to I've worked to a level one trauma center downtown. I've worked the streets. Uh, I'm a qualified SWAT medic. Um, so I've, I've been doing, doing that for about the last three years. And I do a lot of teaching. I'm a, a qualified tactical emergency combat, uh, casualty care instructor and I'm also a BLS instructor as well so and on the side he does brain surgery <laughs> no, no I wish <laughs> second here I'm gonna stab my arm and Gabe we're gonna put him to the test you ready I'm all set one of the things I always talk to viewers about and it's I mean everybody wants to be John Wick they sure. went around out there and by all means that's what I do I teach people obviously defensive training and I'm, I'm all about that and marksmanship and safe shooting mm -hmm. and all that that's all good but at the end of the day let's be honest I mean when it comes to helping the general public and saving lives and being the hero, it's probably going to come down most likely to medical. Without a doubt. All right. Without so for those guys out there who want to get their first kit, get in there. Obviously, we want to talk about training. We'll talk about that in a few minutes. But what is like the essential, what do I want? What do I want to have with me? Sure. There's there's lots of good uh, commercially available kits out there these days. Okay. Um, if you do good research, uh, you'll find companies that have them. But at a bare minimum... There are certain. Well, hold on. Let me ask this. Since yes. you brought that up, when you talk about commercial kits, do you is there a, do you favor one or the other? Would you like to build your own kit for most people, or would you say there's some good quality kits you can just buy them as they are? What would what would you say on that? I personally believe in building your own kit. Okay. Um, right. Because again, um, these are mission specific. Sure. These are things that you should have with you depending on what you're going to do throughout the day and what you want to be prepared for. No different than what you would have with your firearm or an edge weapon or pepper spray, or whatever else you would have on gotcha. your own personal protection. It's the same concept. So okay. um, at a minimum, the things that you should have on you going out for the day, one, number one, it's a tourniquet. Um, these are commercially available. They're relatively inexpensive and definitively will save a life in the right circumstances, especially if you're carrying a firearm for self-defense. Well, let me this ask you this, because I, I, I get this question too. When we talk about tourniquets, there's mm -hmm. more than just one type of tourniquet. Absolutely. So why don't you Absolutely. tell them just quick, brief, what, what, what type of tourniquets are there? Sure. Um, well, you have the, the, right now you have the Gen 7 CATS, or the Combat Application Tourniquet is one big one uh, that's out there. Um, <clears throat> you have the, the soft tees, that I don't have an actual example of them here, but okay. um, you have the soft tee, the regular ones and the wides are both approved. Okay. All of these are readily available online and you should really be looking at things that are, are approved by e either a medical body or the ones that we look at are approved by the Committee on Tactical Combat Casualty Care. Gotcha. Um, they do all the extensive research. These things have been done millions of times. One of the big things that I also advocate for um, with your tourniquet use is a SWAT tee. These are uh, just an elastic, um, rolled up elastic bandage. They work really well. They're size independent, uh, as opposed to where these tend to only have a certain amount of space that they will open up. Um, so these, this, this is a good uh, alternative if you're not going to carry that. I know a lot of people that end up actually carrying nothing but a SWAT tee and a package of quick clot with them. That's now with some of these, and I don't want to get into big training on sure. how to, but on some of these, don't they have writing on there that stretches to a certain amount when you know it's on there? Well Absolutely, yeah. yeah. If you look at the actual um, the directions on the back of here, it'll tell you that there's uh, diamonds on the actual um, gotcha. band. So when you stretch it out, it'll tell you how tight it's supposed to go. Gotcha. I can tell you from experience in doing this with and doing some of the more realistic training with folks, um, when you are when you're amped up, 
you're not going <laughs> to under tighten these sort of things. The other one that I wanted to kind of point out, a company called Combat Medical. Uh, they have this uh, newer version of a, a, a tourniquet called the TMT. Uh, another one that's just been approved. Really good. I've never even kind seen of it. an upgrade on, I don't want to say an upgrade, but a different design. Kind of the best of both worlds when you come be, uh, between the CAD tourniquet and the softies. Um, yeah. Just like a that. really, really, really good design. The attachment for the, where the wingless goes, that's pretty interesting. Very much so. Yeah. And these are, these are ones that not only are they a much wider band, if everybody can see how wide those are, mm -hmm. it's a much wider bland, uh, band than the either the the soft T wides or the cat tourniquets. Um, these are UV resistant, so you don't have to worry about leaving them out in the sure, light. Sure. Um, and then the securing device that's on here is very very secure. Yeah, that's beefy. That's it is. Yeah. And although I'm not a big advocate for taking the buckle, which is why I like the cat tourniquets. It does have oh. a buckle, as I'm stuck to the table here. Uh, it does have a buckle attachment on here if you needed to use it. So tourniquets. Fantastic. <laughs> that's pretty much the, the, the bulk of what I would recommend for people to have. Okay. The other thing that you need to have with you during the day is either a good um, Z-fold or a regular gauze bandage, trauma bandage, one of those okay. things, and a package of quick clot. You have to be careful when you buy these because these are the actual gauze. Right. And if you read the packaging, it'll tell you that it's the actual gauze. If you buy them commercially, you can buy them and it does say that it's a sponge. We don't want to buy the sponges, we want to buy the gauze because the purpose of this is getting it down inside the wound and actually causing it to stop bleeding or at least helping your body to yeah. stop it from bleeding. So um, at a very minimum, and I know plenty of people that rubber band two of these together and stick them in their back pocket. This is probably the minimum you should walk out of the house with during the day. Right. So even if you so went- quick clot? Quick clot, a bandage, and a tourniquet. Gotcha. Perfect. Right in that order. That is the minimum of what I would walk out of my house with during the day. And if you look at some of the examples of the ankle rigs um, that I have here, this is a, a great one from Gadsden Dynamic, a nice local company um, that makes really good gear. And then another one that I have here as well. You can walk out of the house during the day and have everything you need. I keep a pair of trauma shears with me and whatnot, so um, and have everything you need to, to awesome to deal with that. It's kind of interesting that you brought up as far as carrying this on your ankle, because mm -hmm. I mean that's one thing. I mean we could talk, we could have duffel bags full of stuff, right? Sure. But I mean, just like we always talk about with firearms, I mean if if my if I'm carrying a gigantic gun and uh, an extended magazine and all this Gucci gear on it, am I probably going to carry that? No, right? Right. So we leave it at home. It's uncomfortable, whatever the case is. So having your gear with you, obviously, is critical. Absolutely. And so this is interesting. So tell us a little bit about how you carry your stuff here with, okay. with this rig. So this is just like, a, again, these are just some examples of ankle rigs that are here. So let's let's talk about this one. So we'll, if we're going to wear this for the day, again, it's an ankle rig, so it's going to go around your ankle. I want to take my tourniquet, find my slot for that. Okay. Go ahead and secure that down. And then I'm going to take, pretty much with me, I'm going to take a, a roll of quick clot. And that's going to go in my other little pouch that's on the side here. But all I have to do is wrap this around my ankle and I can walk out. It's comfortable. You can wear these all day. These are lightweight. They're not bulky. They don't cut into your leg. And you have pretty much everything you need um, to stop a, a life-threatening bleed, which is sure. the idea of carrying all this stuff. Now, this is not the be-all and end-all. You can carry other things with you. You can put a bandage in here if you want to. Sure. Um, you can put a pair of trauma shears in here if you want to. I know when I go out, this, this one is more my travel kit. So as I go out with this on, I'll have... Right pocket. I will have pretty much all of this on me. And then a pair of trauma shears. I can take you know, I mean, this. That's, uh, that's pretty reasonable. I mean, you just put that on your ankle. And <laughs> it's a slick setup. I like it that. Does. And it does. And it's, like I said, it's comfortable. It, for those of you that, that go in and you train or you're out on the range for the day just shooting or whatnot, these are mm -hmm. excellent things to have with you. Um, I take this on an airplane with me, obviously without the scissors, but I take this on an airplane without with me. Without the scissors, people. <laughs> Don't take the scissors. Um, but it has everything I need. doesn't matter where I go. I can travel with this and it's, and it's lightweight. Now, 
if it's the summertime and you have shorts on and you're wearing... Oh, no, I'm you know, doing whatever, it anyway. Screw it. Yeah. <laughs> You'll have an ankle kit on. But, I mean, at a bare minimum, you can stick this other stuff in your pocket. But this is just a great all-around setup for going about your everyday and having stuff with I you. Love and, it. and you go out and you and you remember that you have this stuff with you and you're not gonna forget it. All right, so let's say now we're gonna talk about a travel bag, a car bag, something where we, we're not gonna be lugging it necessarily in our body and we can have a lot more stuff in it. Sure. What's, uh, what's the essential stuff and uh, what do we wanna have in that? Okay. What do you got there, what is that? So this is just a uh, kind of like a, a, a day pack that I keep with me. Um, this holds all of my stuff. This stays in my vehicle. It doesn't really go anywhere. It travels with me. Gotcha. So if I switch vehicles or I go to travel to a hotel or something like that, I can take this with me. It's a crossbody pack. You can buy them online. They're all over the place. And they work really well. They hold a lot of gear. Okay. Um, and you can put all sorts of stuff. You can sure. put water in here, whatever you need, uh, stuff to clean up, whatnot. So at a, and we're talking about things being a little more expansive what do we need we obviously have our single tourniquet here i'm a big believer in multiple tourniquets okay why because we have four limbs sure so if you get involved in an altercation or, or the uh, you know a defensive use or you see your defensive weapon the chances of you getting injured in more than one limb is is fairly likely so having the ability to deal with that is important so even if it's just carrying a couple extra cat tourniquets like I have here, um, another SWAT tee that you might have on you. Uh, one of the big things from uh, TACMED Solutions is a is a Olay's bandage. Mm -hmm. These are really good piece of kit to have with you. Just another compression bandage that you can use even if you're not going to use a, uh, a tourniquet on that. One of the big things that I advocate for in every kit that you have is a some sort of lighting device. Gotcha. This just happens to be a cheap $25 Lowe's headlamp. It's bright. It's got a red light on it. It lasts forever. And I can put this on my head and now my hands are free if I need to, to do something. The chances of you coming upon something like a car accident, your neighbor gets injured, whatever it is, this stuff is still very relevant to that. So sure. um, having that ability is fine. And then I also keep things like chest seals. Gotcha. Statistically, uh, defensive use of firearms, the incidence of, of torso trauma, getting shot or stabbed or, or injured in your torso sure. is very high. Obviously, tourniquets don't solve that. So the ability to have something to be able to seal that chest is another thing and requires very little training to learn how to use. We were just talking, uh, every time I use the, the tourniquet on the neck, it's just a, it's a bad outcome. The outcomes are really bad with that. They're really, really bad with that. So, And then also, the other thing that I have on here that I keep with me, it's just a basic... And it's orange so that nobody mistakes it sure. for something else. This is just a basic first aid kit. It's got your bandages. It's got tape. It's got cold packs. It's got all that stuff. Right. You can keep aspirin and anti-nausea medication and all sorts of stuff that you might need with you. It's a one-size-fits-all thing. And I, nobody's going to mistake this right. for something else. If I say, hey, go grab me the orange pack. This is something that I want, and I don't want something that's out of my big Absolutely. pack. So. And by the way, for you guys out there, aspirin, it's not just for headaches cardiac situations absolutely absolutely you can get people asking um another subject but you, you can have you can have that particularly on you um some other things you might want to keep with you on here that i have things like a glass hammer or if you don't carry a, a, a sharp knife with you a rescue knife those sure. type of things you can keep with you um a marker something to mark with you might need to write stuff down you might need to address the time that you put a tourniquet on on someone um, and this is just a good piece of kit to have so um, those are pretty much all the things that i keep in here i do have some other airway device stuff what i will tell um, the viewers is you need to to make sure that you're comfortable with using this stuff there's a lot of, uh, of kits that you can buy out there that have a lot of more advanced mm -hmm. equipment in them be wary of that if you're not comfortable with using them it doesn't really do you any good to have it and, and keep it with you. There's an old adage I know uh, from talking to people about having stuff with you so that the person behind you mm -hmm. can come and use it. The person behind you that's coming, especially if they're you know, rescue personnel or whatnot, most likely will have that stuff with them to begin with. So gotcha. why take up the space? Keep your kits as minimalistic and as efficient as possible for what you're going to use them for Absolutely. and then go forward. So those are the kind of things that I would keep... Um, with you at all now obviously there's bigger packs there's range packs if you want to have 
you know, water and some sort of uh, sure. solution for cleaning wounds or whatnot. You can keep all that stuff with you. But again, it goes back to the idea of making sure that you're comfortable with what you're using. Gotcha. Don't carry something that you're not comfortable or trained with using. Well, let's let's bring that up because, sure. I mean, w this is pretty much useless to you if you have no idea what it is and how to use it. Absolutely. I mean, it'd be like me handing Absolutely. you a firearm and saying, okay, there you go. You're protected now. It just doesn't work. No, no it doesn't. So not. the most important part of all of this, really, not just having the, the equipment, is knowing how to use the equipment. Without a doubt. So, so proper training, wherever you are in your area, obviously, if you're in our area, we'd like you to come see our, see our guy here. But... Regardless, training is, is paramount to this. Without movie. a doubt. Um, proper, realistic, contextualized training yep. is where the rubber meets the road. I can teach you all day long how to put these things on, but when you have to do it when the chips are down, when it's raining or it's dark, or well, you're wrestling... Say the S word. Stress. Stress. Say very it. much so. <laughs> Stress inoculation is a big thing. All right. Because all of this stuff doesn't matter if you're not able to do it right. when, when, the, when it really matters. Here's an idea for you. This is sure. a, a kit, uh, this is uh, my, this dirty range bag. But this green bag right here sure. is uh, one of my uh, kits that I take anytime we're, we're doing shooting. Mm -hmm. So let's just, you never seen it before. I'm gonna just, let's tear this open. Okay. You tell me if you think it's hot garbage, if you think there's good things in it, if you think we should add to it. Uh, but generally this is what I have uh, that's really close by, right when we're on the range and we're shooting. And of course this is a tearaway bag, we, we could rip this whole thing off sure. if we want. But I'll just uh, pull Here, this, pull Here's this the here. first thing that I will tell you, and, and I'll tell uh, the people watching this, is sure. that this is a different color than the rest of your bag. So it stands out. Yeah. It's one of those things where if I have to tell someone else to go get the kit, right. I don't have to describe to them where it is. It's a different color. That's a big thing. Sure. Okay. And so, our shoot, it's funny because in our shooting, in our classes, before we start, we do a safety briefing. And I have a little, I think it's pink or red. And I say, the little pink is a boo boo bag. You can use it all yes. you want today. A little scratch and cuts. Yep. The green bag's a trauma bag. We're not going to use that today, but Correct. if you do, Correct. here it is. So let's uh, let's delve in here. Let's, let's okay. see what we got. Well, first thing I noticed, you got an Ole's bandage, which is spectacular because those things are, are, are my personal choice for a compression bandage. Uh, they're just, the multitude of uses you can do with that is a great thing. You've got extra uh, pairs of, of sterile gloves. That's a good thing. You want to be changing these. If you get your hands dirty, you want to be changing these things or at least putting new gloves over top of it. You've got sections of gloves here that you need. Mm -hmm. As I look through here, okay, we've got some tape. That's a good thing to have just for uh, administrative purposes if you need it. Cool. A good pair of trauma shears. Now, I can't stress this enough. Okay. And I mean that when I say a good pair of trauma shears because there are lots of ones out there that do not cut very well. They look like good pairs of trauma mm -hmm. shears, but they're not. So you really want to bet what you buy when you have these. So not, that's a good thing to have in okay. here. Obviously, you've got a tourniquet. Uh, it's a soft tee wide. Since we we're looking at the ones here, this is a soft tee wide. Nice wide band. Uh, good to have in here. We've got a section of high fin chest seal uh, for sealing a chest if we need it. And then you've got a face shield for doing um, compressions or something like that if you, if you have to, if you're doing CPR. Uh, all good kit. I think everything in here is, is good. It's all very uh, well-proven material. There are some things that I would add to it. But Great, come on, take okay. it. Lay it on us. So again, going back to this being a range bag. Sure. Okay, so we, we are operating around firearms. We're operating around stuff that's dynamic. Sure. I would probably add another, another at least another tourniquet. Okay. Okay. So um, bandage-wise, Same awesome. style? Would you, or you, you could. You could, or you could mix it up and, and throw another, throw a cat in there. It doesn't really matter. As long as the people that are there, or, or they can give it to you and you know how to use it. So. Gotcha. Um, chest seals. I am always a big fan of carrying two of these, simply for the fact that um, I may I may need more than one of these. Sure. There's two in a pack, right. but I may need more than one of them. So two of them sure. is always and, and it's a backup. If one these usually will stick when they're wet, but right. yeah, just on the case, just a backup. So um, the only other thing that I don't see in here is quick lot. Some sort of hemostatic gauze. Gotcha. Um, very important. It adheres to all of the standards for bleeding control and whatnot. Um, you can use the gauze. If, for those of you that don't know, there's a, um, a rather large section of long, regular medical gauze behind the pad and knees. You can use that. Hemostatic gauze just is a better product to use. Gotcha. So throwing something like that in there would be would be a, appropriate. 
Other than that, I, and then maybe some, if you don't have, a, I, I imagine you probably carry some sort of lighting device on you, but if you do, oh, have a, sure. Um, other than that, I think everything in here is, yeah, everything in here is, is good. Fantastic. It, it's, it's a, it's, and for what you, like, we talked about this being mission specific, for what you're using it for, it's right. perfect. Well, awesome, Gabe. I appreciate all the information you got. I'm sure there's a lot, of, a lot of great stuff out there for all the viewers. Mm -hmm. So how can they uh, how can they get a hold of you if they want to? Uh, if you look at the, at the bottom description for the video here, my email address and phone number will be there. I do have a website that's under construction right okay. now, so they should be able to reach me on there. Coming up on the 22nd of this month, there will be a class at C4 Shooting Center up in Madison. There will um, also be a link to that. There will also be a link Which to is, that. Which is, by the way, our, our range that we shoot at. You guys right. all know. So. And it's a, it's a good, about a five, six hour class that you're going to get a good amount of uh, education on why this stuff is appropriate and how to use it. And then we're going to put you in a little bit of some, some uncomfortable positions. And, That's where I'm going to stay at my own. And, yes, exactly. Uh, in addition to that, Kim went to your class. Yes. What was the name of that class? What did you call that one? Uh, it's just Everyday Med Trauma. Med Trauma? Well, yeah. So Kim, what did you think of that class? That was a great class. That's why he's here today. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> A, a labor of love. It's one of those things where it, the information is very important to get out there to the public, and uh, for not so much to understand, you know, what you should carry, but the why. Gotcha. You know, so. So we're gonna do a part two, by the way. You guys can look up forward to that. That's going to be specifically about uh, training, types of training, and so forth. Sure. So we're gonna we do that one. So if you, you stay tuned to that, that'll be coming out very soon. Thanks again, Gabe. I appreciate you coming. You're very welcome. Thank you for having me here. Absolutely. We're gonna be, by the way, doing a class with Gabe coming up here. We're doing a combo class, a little medical and shooting, all that kind of good stuff. So that's gonna be good times. We're gonna have more information when that uh, gets released and when that's gonna be happening. If you guys are interested in that, go ahead and sign up to our on our website, to our, our email list, and we'll be uh, putting out notifications when that class is coming out. So that'll be very exciting. You know how to find us. Of course, we're on YouTube. We're on Facebook, Instagram. We're tweeting on Twitter. And of course, we put our A-list stuff on Patreon. By the way, we might even do some secret videos just for Patreon with Gabe. Mm, okay. Until next time, remember, somebody's better be judged by 12 than carried by 6. See ya.